we have got into the habit in these online services of saying that we should usually be in the chapel in the tower. Today is an exception to that rule because normally the chapel would be closed on the first Sunday after Easter, so you can regard this service as a bonus track. This Sunday is commonly referred to as Low Sunday. In good Anglican fashion, nobody really knows why it's called Low Sunday. The consensus is that it's a bit of a come down after the exuberant joy and glory of Easter, an anticlimax, if you will, but that frankly seems a bit hard. In the reading from Acts, which Martin read for us, and which the lectionary insists must be read on this Sunday, we have a report by Luke of Peter preaching in Jerusalem. If you're watching the continuous version of this service, you'll see here some paintings of Peter preaching in Jerusalem. You can read the biblical account and get drawn in immediately to the rhetoric, to the way in which Peter addresses the crowd and how he makes his points. There were various nationalities and beliefs represented in the crowd, but Peter addresses himself especially to the Jews, to the Israelites amongst them. What he then says to them about David and the Messiah is clearly of direct relevance and interest to that audience. But what it's easy to miss when getting into the detail of what Peter says is how extraordinary it is that Peter should be speaking in public in this way at all, and especially to a Jewish crowd. Our reading begins at verse 14 of the second chapter of Acts. The first 13 verses of that chapter describe the events of Pentecost, which we shall not be celebrating until the end of May. It's immediately after the disciples' Pentecost experience of the coming of the Holy Spirit upon them in the form of tongues of flame that we find Peter making the speech in today's reading. Question. Why does the lectionary insist on this reading for the first Sunday after Easter? Think back to Maundy Thursday and to Good Friday. Remember how Peter had sworn by all that was holy never to abandon his Lord and Master? Remember how that same Jesus looked Peter in the eye and predicted that he would deny him three times before the cock crew the next morning? And so it transpired. Peter denied the Christ three times. All four Gospels relate how Peter swore that he would never deny Jesus and how Jesus assured him that he would do so three times before the cock crew. You might think that this extraordinary, egregious and embarrassing example of human frailty on the part of one of the leading disciples might have been quietly omitted from the Gospels, but there it is in all four. If you think about it, Peter's betrayal represents a kind of death. The faithful, impetuous, incautious Peter swore blind that he would never betray his master and then did just that, three times, just as foretold. We are told that he wept. I imagine that he said to himself, I wish I were dead. Maybe he even contemplated ending it all for shame. The old Peter was no more. But now, filled with the Holy Spirit, we find him preaching to the very same people whose wrath he feared just a few weeks before. Given how they had turned on Jesus, Peter was surely taking an immense risk in standing up in front of them, in Jerusalem, of all places, and proclaiming that that same Jesus whom they had rejected had risen from the dead and was indeed the promised Messiah. Peter was a new man. He had undergone his own resurrection. And this surely is why this reading is set for the first Sunday after Easter. The events of Easter Day were not just the climax of a story about God. They were part of the continuing story of God's enduring relationship with his people. Jesus's rising from the dead gave and continues to give hope that we too may rise from death to life. Peter's story is far from unique. Loud protestations of loyalty which vanish like a puff of wind when challenged. Peter was neither the first nor the last to show moral cowardice. And yet, and yet, there he is just a little while later, risking his life willingly, knowingly to witness to that same Lord whom he had betrayed. That is some resurrection. And thus, on this first Sunday after Easter, the redemption story continues. Not such a low Sunday, after all. Amen.